Bags down, spikes on, welcome to the track. Hi, my name is Colin Waitsman, and I'm going to be your host for this episode of Track World News, presented by Track Barn. And today is day two of our eight minutes in Eugene series, breaking down every single thing that happened throughout the entire World Championships. And today we have three or four main stories that we're going to be talking about: the men's 100 meter final, what happened there; uh, the women's 100 meter prelims, just some updates going on there. Randolph Ross got suspended. We're going to be diving into what happened there and then the men's long jump as well before we go any further i want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video manscaped as track athletes we're going to be running tons of miles every week and can be really sweaty and gross after a hard day of practice but those days are behind us Manscaped just sent me their brand new performance package, which comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Look, I've tried a lot of razors in my day, but the Lawnmower 4.0 is just different. Its ceramic blade helps reduce grooming accidents. LED light allows you to shave anytime, anywhere, and since it's waterproof, you can even take it in the shower if you want. When shopping with Manscaped, use code TWN at checkout to get 20% off your entire order, plus free shipping worldwide. Show up to your next meet looking good. If you want to be the best, you got to look the best. Link is in the description, and now back to the video. So um, if you enjoy this, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. Only like 30% of you are actually subscribed. So if you're enjoying this stuff, subscribe. Uh, okay, let's get right into it here. So the men's 100 meters. So we had both the semis and the finals that happened here. Uh, in the semis, the big kind of notable thing that we noticed was the fact that we didn't see Lamont Jacobs in there. He, he ended up pulling out of the semis and, and didn't, didn't compete. He wrote on an Instagram post saying, hey, just wasn't feeling right. And, you know, he, he really wanted to compete. He wanted to go up against these guys, but it, it wasn't going to work out. And seeing how he ran in the first round, it's not too surprising. He didn't run too well. Uh, so that kind of sucked, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's fine at the end of the day. Big other story from the semis is the fact that we got four Americans going through. We had Fred Curley, Bracey, Trayvon Brumell, Christian Coleman all making it through to the finals. They all looked really good while they were doing it. Uh, and then when we're there, uh, it's showtime. And we know that it's showtime and it's looking good because, I mean, shoot, Travis Scott is at this track meet. Like, he, he's there and, and he's enjoying himself. So it's cool we're getting celebrities, like actually big time celebrities coming out to the World Championship and watching and supporting and so now let's get into the race and what happened so uh in the race your top performing your will go from eighth to first so eighth place aaron brown 1007 uh abdul hakeem sani brown uh 1006 christian coleman sixth place 1001 uh simbine fifth place 1001 oblique seville fourth 997 Trayvon Brumell, third, 988. Marvin Bracey, second, 988. And then Fred Curley, first with a 986. This was a very, very good race because if you go back and watch the tape, all of these guys are like at first at one different time. Fred Curley it didn't start off very well. He's behind for much of the race. And you see Marvin Bracey, he's in position to really look like he could do some damage here. One thing that stunk for Trayvon Brumell was he was all out in lane eight. This All of this competition is happening in lane four and five and three, while you got Trayvon Brumell all the way out by himself, uh, you know, not really able to, to know what's going on. And so they're racing and it's going back and forth and back and forth. And then at the last second, you start seeing Fred Curley inching up and he out leans uh, Marvin Bracey at the line. Uh, and if we, if you look at the chart, one thing that was really impressive is that everyone else, you know, you reach your top end speed and then it slowly starts going down. So with Fred Curley, he reached his top end speed and went down a little bit. And then right at the lean, it popped right back up. That's his 400 meter endurance that was allow, allowing him to kind of defy physics and get faster at the end of the race. So uh, Fred Curley, great race for him. He was able to get his gold medal. Marvin Bracey, he's able to get that, that world individual medal. Trayvon Vermel, he was emotional. He was really excited about him finally being able to kind of get the monkey off his back. Uh, Christian Coleman, though, 
kind of upsetting for him. You know, he, he ends up coming in sixth here. So I'm wondering, you know, is he going to take a look at himself like, hey, I was I was the champ in 2019. You know, and then I come out here and I'm, I'm getting sixth uh, in, a, in a very tough race. I'm sure he's kind of beating himself up about it. So no need to do it, you know, too much here. Um, obviously, he did have the whole year of or two years of not competing. So that plays a factor. But um, you know, uh, I, I was expecting a little bit more from him uh, going into the season. Interesting to see how this is going to play out in 2023 and then 2024. Next story that we're going to get into. So the women's 100, just going to talk about this briefly. There, there wasn't too much. Like we said, it's the opening round. The Jamaicans are looking really good. Uh, Jamaicans ended up racing at a, at a pretty, pretty good pace. All of them, you know, went in there and did their thing. Dina Asher Smith is probably the most talked about story there. Like she is someone that could potentially get on this medal stand. Like she ran, what was it? A 1085, uh, which was a near personal best for her. The Americans look standard. Like none of them were like, oh, she's going to be a problem, you know, and come the world championships or, or come the final. They just all looked pretty good. They did what they needed to do. It's round one. What can you expect? And that is Randolph Ross. So Randolph Ross, three-time national champion in, in the NCAA circuit. Uh, he's coming in as an Olympian and then now here in the world championships in the 400. He is notified that he is not able to compete at the world championships and he is has a provisional suspension due to whereabouts issues so uh it came out this morning that back in on june uh 18th so around usa's he had a whereabouts issue uh which he appealed and it didn't go through and he is now no longer allowed to compete at the world championships and we don't know how long the suspension could be the details are very very murky as of right now like this was just announced yesterday morning so we're not too sure exactly what went down but what it appears to be is a little bit different than just a you know a standard whereabouts issue because we know that it's like the three strikes and you're out rule and this is the first time we're hearing anything when it comes to randolph ross and so it's like okay what's different about this case that you're now being affected longer or immediately rather than hey you messed up once that's a you know an issue second time that's an issue this one it was like one and you're done so I'm guessing there has to be something else that's going on here, which sucks because like, I'm a huge fan of Randolph Ross. Uh, you know, I like him. I interviewed his father. His father's very nice, you know, really great guy. Uh, and so it, it sucks when these types of things happen. Uh, I'm sure a story is going to be developing. We're going to hear from one side and from the other side, but uh, really unfortunate when it comes to Randolph Ross. I was looking forward to seeing him in the 400 and the 4x4 as well. Uh, then long jump. So this was an event that was really really cool so toward throughout this entire competition uh the the competitor that is from israel so uh matadis teglu butchered the heck out of his name he is leading for pretty much this entire competition uh, and then on the very last jump jiang wang out of china comes out and goes from sixth to first on a major jump it was a lot of energy, you know, just seeing this big jump after big jump. Now we're, we're still not seeing those crazy jumps that we we're seeing, you know, back in the eighties and nineties when Carl Lewis and, and all of them were competing, which, you know, is unfortunate, but uh, it was still a, a great competition there. Um, also last other thing, kind of talk about the atmosphere of the meet. So the atmosphere has been really great. Like um, the, the fans have been getting into it. You know, we've got good music. I really like this mascot that they have, the Bigfoot guy at Legend. I think that it's funny and it, it's nice. I see all them like trying to give knuckles, you know, to, to athletes and them just turning them down because they're, they're, you know, they're getting in the zone there and everything. Uh, that was cool. Like I said, uh, Travis Scott was at this competition. I, I'm wondering what other type of celebrities might have been there. Uh, I've been watching the Peacock broadcast, so I haven't been watching the NBC broadcast, which is where they might be talking to some of these people so if any of that's happening i'm missing it unfortunately but uh so far uh it's looking pretty pretty good i'm seeing people complaining like comparing the world championships to the diamond league which i think is an unfair comparison look i love trashing on the ticket sales of track and field events it's like my favorite thing but you can't compare a 10-day event to a one-day event they're completely different scenarios if you wanted to compare the world championships this year to doha in 2019 i'm all for that like that's a fair comparison but you can't do a world championship, which is a 10 day event, and then compare it to a one day event because they're completely different things and have completely different um, you know, people that are going to it. But 
yeah, so far day two, very, very fun. Looking at day three, we're gonna have the hammer throw as a final, the men's 10K is gonna be a final. That women's 10K was awesome. Very cool. They finished out their lap in like 60 seconds, which was insane. Uh, women's pole vault final, the men's shot put final. You're gonna have the 110 hurdles final and then the women's 100. So a lot of stuff going on there. And also the discus, or not the discus, sorry. The heptathlon is starting as well. So we're gonna be getting those events going on tomorrow and the next day. So that's gonna do it for us here. Hope that you enjoyed this episode of Eight Minutes in Eugene. It's been a lot of fun. Hope that you enjoy listening to it. We'll see you guys tomorrow recapping all the events from today. Have a good one. Peace.